New studies reveal that most Western adults still cannot do the Asian squat. Why is that? And are they missing out on some ancient secret to good health? Yeah, this is surprisingly going viral right now. Andrew, you actually made the cover photo on the IG Next Shark post. And uh, Andrew, long story short, what's going on? How come Asians can do the Asian squat or the Slav squat, whatever you want to call it, but Western people, especially Americans, statistically cannot? All right, so it has a lot to do with probably flexibility number one, but also culture and body fat. So I guess there's a lot of studies that came out recently that said, you know, short limbs might make it easier to balance. There's also somebody said, listen, you're pretty much folding up your body at three different joints. So you gotta be super flexible. Um, obviously it also comes down to your ankle Doris flexion, which means that your foot can actually move towards your knee. That means your, your ankle is pretty flexible. You have great ankle mobility. I don't know, David. I mean, it's also called the Slav squat. So I don't want to say that like European blooded people can't do it, but it seems like it might be part of Asian culture. Maybe I was just wherever Genghis Khan showed up. It's the Genghis Khan squad. Wow. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notifications, guys. From silly to serious, I'm going to go ahead and put this in the silly lane. But people were bringing up serious stuff like, you know, Asians have longer torsos and shorter limbs statistically on an aggregate level. So it was like an interesting way to, I guess, to bring up what, what, like phenotypical differences? See, I told you that me and you, the Asian brothers, we all do the Slav squat, the Asian squat. Maybe, perhaps, we call it Genghis squat. Yeah, the squat is a triple flexion movement. You've got bending at the hips, knees, and ankles, so you have to fold up everything underneath you. And uh, there's a ton of reasons for this, Andrew. Is it is it just out of the necessity? Squat toilets uh, stayed around in Asia for much longer than in other parts of the world, I guess particularly China, but Japan and Korea as well. David, um, does it have to do with economics? Perhaps if you are lower income or you're more of a blue collar worker, you spend more time close to the ground or you need time to rest between labor. And so you need to sit in a stable position and pick weeds or pick up stuff or, or, or just take a smoke break. I agree with you in the sense that, and a lot of people don't think about this. I do think the richer, higher class people in Asia do the Asian squat less. Oh. It's more of what you consider a blue collar or factory worker thing. I heard in Russia, it's called a gopnik thing, which is like a, almost like hooligans. Young Russian <laughs> hooligans do it a lot. <laughs> like, I don't know, man. Um, you know, I think that once you, honestly, if I was to break it down on a more physiological level, once you, as a man, once you get past 25% body fat or a woman, maybe 35% body fat, I think doing or learning the fob squat, unless you already knew how to do it from a kid, becomes exponentially harder. Right, right. And I will say this, guys. You know, generally, squatting is better for your bowel movement. It's easier to poop because it aligns your intestines and everything like that. So, I like, what I helps me when I poop, even though I sit on the toilet, right, on the chair-style toilet, I actually lift my knees up. I either go on my tippy toes or I step on something that lifts my knees up a little higher. And that honestly helps me poop. Right, so, I don't know. I think a lot of Westerners are missing out on this. You're trying to create some vertical, gravitational, intestinal alignment. I'm trying to work with gravity. Here. Anyway, let's... Let's get into the comments section. Of course, uh, we actually have an Asian comment section and a white comment section. Somebody said, it's my greatest shame in my life that I can't Asian or fob squat. Now somebody said, yay, it's the kimchi squat. Someone said, no, nah, I can't do it. I don't know. Am I losing my Asian card? Uh, I can't. I'm Asian. I can't do it. It's due to my bone structure. It's due to my bone structure. Is this true? Is this person making excuses? How much does it have to do with being Asian? <laughs> Obviously, not a, not a hundred out of a hundred Asians can do the Asian squat, fob squat, kimchi squat, whatever you want to call it but probably a greater proportion out of a 100-person sample size can. Dude, if your culture requires you to do it once a day, I guarantee you, you would try to do it. Listen, there's a lot of buff American weightlifters that can clearly do the squat, and their thighs are huge. Right, you're saying to do a power clean or something yeah, like that, right? Yeah, so, it's so clearly, it's, it's, it's more of a flexibility thing. I guarantee you, anybody who does yoga on a regular basis can probably do the Asian squat. So, really, is it an Asian squat? Is it part of Asian culture? I don't know. I don't know, man. Is it a stereotype? Theory, hey, by the way, guys, I'm just asking, Andrew, to say that of the basketball players that you see in LA Fitness or 24-Hour Fitness, a higher proportion of the black players can dunk or touch the rim <laughs> than the Asian David, or Latino players. I'm David, just saying. What are you saying? Are you trying to say that maybe certain groups happen to be better than other groups at some things? No, maybe they just do it more. Somebody said... Uh, 
you know, this is a Slav squat. We call this a Russian prisoner squat. Somebody said in Africa, we do it here as well. Um, yeah, this is a thing that's popular around the world, right? But yeah. I, I think in America, the most visible way to see it is, you know, with like a chef in a wife beater or like a, you know, at the walk with a cigarette in Chinatown, right? I, I just think you're going to be able to do this squat if you need to spend time closer to the ground. Like if you're cleaning or you're even, I've seen people eat off the ground, obviously in certain countries. I'm just saying I'm just saying, you're going to be closer. Somebody said it has to do with uh, Asians having different bodies, longer torsos, shorter limbs. It also contributes to Asians being generally the world's best power lifters too. How much of this is true, Andrew? We are getting into more like macro aggregate statistics about uh, limb length between countries. I, you know, I'm not a scientist, but I'd say it probably has a little bit to do with it, but it's not the determining factor. Right. Somebody said, man, it just literally has to do with how often you do that thing. I'm a gardener. I'm like a lady. I, I, I do it. You know what I mean? Like anybody who has a job that requires you to learn this is going to know how to do it. David, somebody said, I mean, uh, it's how you squatted to smoke a cigarette when you tried to look cool back in the day with your friends. Is that true? Does the squat look cool? I Would think you in Asia it looks cool. I think for the people who do it, it looks cool. But for Asian Americans, that's why they kind of, and I don't know if this is derisive or not, called it the fob squat. Right. Yeah, I don't think I've seen a lot of Asian American frat guys or girls in K-Town on a Friday night doing it. You know what's funny? Is, <laughs> you know what's funny? Is that I don't think it necessarily looks cool because you're like, penile crotch area is totally exposed and it might rip your pants if your pants are too tight but i'll say this it's more hygienic than sitting on the ground because technically your feet are the only things touching the ground versus if you sit on the ground which i think yeah. looks cooler your pants are actually on the ground i actually think it has to do with violating american cultural norms because uh it feels like you're like peeing out in the woods during camping or something uh, like that two americans that's the only context it looks like you're taking a shat right right um, let's get into the comments from Yahoo. The, of course, these are more boomer comments. Somebody said, it's simply because Asians are skinnier people. Being overweight and fat makes it almost impossible to do the squat. I think that it makes I it impossible to learn it at an older age, too. Because I, think, I, I think it's harder, man. I think you got to just stretch out the hip flexor. I think that's the key thing. Uh, somebody said, man, Asians have a uh, shorter legs and a long body, but uh, their comparatively shorter legs are also re the reason why Asians rarely produce world-class runners or jumpers. So that they, this comment make, made sure that they pointed out some negatives of that physiology. Right, right. Yeah, you know, I mean, you know, as a tall Anglo-Saxon, I really don't need to do that Asian squat. Uh, the squat just shows that you're like kind of like the Toyota Camry. I'm more like want to be a... a, a not a Taurus. Uh, I'm an F-150 truck. At least a right? Mustang. Yeah, Mustang's not too flexible. Um, Andrew, other people were talking about how uh, if you were a catcher in baseball or you're a lifelong gardener, you might also have these skills. So they were basically pointing out different instances, which are rare in American life, where you get to learn this squat. Mm. It's called a mobility squat or a deep squat if right. you ever take uh, yoga or PT. Right, exactly. Does it just have to do with like how much you do something throughout your life and yeah. how just like culturally imprinted it is? For sure, for sure, man. You if you get, do it like 10,000 times. Dude, if you try to do the squat every day, I guarantee you but after a certain amount of time, you're going to be able to do it. Somebody said, boo, why does everything have to be labeled racially? It just feels racially divisive nowadays, man. But yeah, you know, I don't want to do it because I, 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 I could do the squat, yeah. but I don't need to because I don't have those Asian squat toilets from 19... 25. It's just funny because the squat is just like a natural motion, but it got racialized because it pinned Asians versus Westerners. You know what I mean? Right. And it was like, oh, a lot of Westerners can't do this thing that actually might be healthy for you. So guess what, Westerners? You have an inferior lifestyle. Yeah. You know, I was kind of like, ah. I mean, they also, you know, had the sit down toilets. I guess you could say that was like, I don't know, more advanced at a time. Right, right. You're talking about the throne seating, right? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I would say that, yeah, some people are like, well, I can't fold myself up like a little robot. I always thought those Asians were like little robots anyways, little human calculators. I don't know. I mean, let's be honest, Andrew. There's a lot of things at play here. Body fat percentage, necessity, cultural norms, flexibility. And then at the very bottom, I'm going to put like differences in ethnic physiology. Right, right. Like, I, like I, really, I don't buy it that much because Sammo Hung was super fat and he could do all that stuff because he trained it. From when he was young. Yeah. I mean, buff weightlifters, man, from every country, they could probably do it. All right. Do you think that Asians, Andrew, should take the Asian squat as any part of being Asian? You know, like using chopsticks the right way or eating rice or noodles, even though these are all stereotypes. 
like bowing and stuff like that. It is true. The majority of consumption, I looked it up, of rice and noodles is in Asia globally. I, I think, David, even though I made the Asian squat video about six years ago in L.A. Right. You have the most I, American media on it. I don't know if I can say that it's part of Asian culture. I'm not sure. Just because they call it the Asian squat, that's more of a Western term. You know, in Asia, they just call it the squat. Well, they probably just call it like I'm just chilling. They, yeah, they call I, it. Yeah, I'm just like waiting here yeah. for you. Like I didn't have a seat. You know, so. you know what it's called? It's called the smoke break squat. Right. <laughs> in Asia. It's just called yeah. <laughs> Just means I'm tired. I'm resting. So I think like uh I don't know. I don't know if it's part of Asian culture because if it's so prevalent in Slavic countries, unless you want to call it the Genghis Khan squat. I don't know, man. But Genghis was I don't on, even know if Mongolians do it. We got to we got to look into is it. Is it the Mongol squad? Uh, anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comment section below. Comments are silly. This whole thing is silly, but I guess, you know, you got to bring up some interesting studies even in all of the silliness. The race wars of everything. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Keep it civil until next time we hop out boys. We out. Peace. Peace.